I source Timothy Cooper. And this is what the uh, current version looks like. Actually, they're available in the uh, other room also. This is a, uh, a replication of the original manuscript. I'll talk more that, about that in just a moment. And then the second one is the burned memo, which was a 1963 era document that was uh, mailed by apparently from a CIA metered uh, meter in, uh, nine, in two, 1999 also. So these are, this is a list of the documents that I possess. As you can see, there's uh, 104 of, of, uh, of them and uh, nearly 4,000 pages. The ones that are in green are the ones where we have the original negatives in a 35 millimeter film, and I actually have the originals. And the ones in red are where we have original paper, uh, which is old. The uh, classifications are shown. We're not going to deal much with the classifications. But you can see it's over a range of times from 1984 to 2001. I haven't received any more since 2001. The titles of these documents are shown here. <laughs> the first one is the Eisenhower briefing document, the famous one that identified the MJ program with uh, MJ 1 through 12. Uh, being individuals. And the uh, Special Operations Manual is the other one in green. But we're going to talk about the Bowen manuscript first and then the burned memo. I'm going to tell you how I got it. <clears throat> Came in a 9 by 14 Jiffy mailer to Tim Cooper in June 1999. And the return address was Fort Meade and uh, actually Freedom of Information Office uh, from the Army. And uh, Sheets were usually double-spaced and single-sided. This is one of, the, one of the sheets. The first page shows actually three addresses that Vernon Bowen, the uh, author, uh, had. Uh, and the, uh, it shows the obvious red stamp. The, the stamp contains four uh, classification caveats. One of them is no foreign dissemination, which is a well-known one. One of them is eyes only, which is also a standard one. And, and then, of course, the other two that are, are not uh, acceptable and known are top secret slash magic, which is the code word we'll talk about, and an errata, which probably means for original, originating agency declassification, declassification authority. Means that you can't declassify this ever. So the, the, uh, those three addresses gave me an easy trail to follow uh, I put up a call to put in a call to the church and said, "Oh yeah, I remember Vernon Bowen. He had a son, Patrick. You want his number?" So <laughs> it's about as easy as you can run into in finding somebody. So I, I called him, told him I had this manuscript. He never knew of the existence of the manuscript, but he still had the typewriter. It was typed on. He was very cooperative. He wanted to see his dad book, dad's book published, and and so that's why we made 200 copies of of which we have uh, 50 or so left, and they're as they say available. The appearance is old looking pages. The watermark was there, the glue was dried, the clippings are loose, and the red and black caveat stamps I'll have an example of. And marginalia in different hands. Here's the way the clippings were fastened with old glue and they just kind of faced, uh, fell off. But uh, Vernon Bowen is a very thorough guy. He had apparently spent nearly every noon hour in New York City Library looking up uh, the Reader's Guide to Periodical Literature and captured every single entry having to do with flying saucers up till the time when he stopped, 1954. So what does this book say? Well, actually, he's a good writer. He, he, he wrote children's books, but he, was, he, has, a, he has a natural style. He, uh, it's kind of gripping going from chapter to chapter. So the chapters are 15 chapters. He begins, really, with the same sort of flavor that you just heard from Jerome Clark. He talks about the things that Charles Fort reported that are an anomalistic phenomena. And, and then finally, in the middle of it, he, he talks about flying saucers, uh, gives a report on, on every periodical and every sighting up to that point that was in the public literature. Then when he comes to chapter 12, the US Air Force and flying saucers, it turns out that's when this, the stamps on this document changed from confidential to top secret slash magic. And so clearly, the Air Force was looking this over to determine whether or not there was something important here, and they, didn't, they classified it before they decided, of course, they do that. And then he concludes with an interesting one. He, he really doesn't know in 1954 what they are, uh, but 
he says he wonders whether or not they're the Soviets, uh, very seriously. And, and then he thinks that, well, maybe we've been capturing some of them ourselves. And in any case, sooner or later, we will know the technology. So he winds up with that thought. They will be sometime ours. Now, I want to share with you a cartoon for a specific reason. Uh, Blondie <coughs> cartoon has Dagwood talking uh, to the clerk, the cat abducted by space aliens, Bigfoot sighted. Who reads this trash? The clerk says over 20 million readers. Dagwood, would you take out the trash? Because I haven't finished reading it yet. <laughs> and what you don't know is that, maybe you don't know, at one time the National Enquirer was controlled by some CIA employees and they're putting stories in about UFOs if it was to the advantage. So I bought a copy of the National Enquirer yesterday to see what, what it says. And it doesn't say anything about UFOs today. But it's all, it's all Hollywood now, probably and controlled by a different management. So the forensic analysis dating of the document was done by Speck and Laboratories. And they did thin layer chromatography, one of the standard techniques to determine the age of ink. Looked at the pencils, could, tried to compare the watermarks, couldn't find a watermark for this particular one. Um, and uh, James Black did the dating of the, uh, well, he identified the typewriter specifically, 1939 Underwood, and that is exactly the typewriter that his son says he has. So there's no question but what this one was written by Vernon Bowen. The uh, uh, pencils are consistent with 1950s. The red stamp ink is not a recent uh, mixture of, uh, of red ink. So. There's really two ages of inks that are important. One is the Bell Point ink in 1961, which is written by Vernon Bowen based on the nature of the com comments. And that was just before he gave it to the Air Force for evaluation. And then the 1977 Bell Point ink has to do with comments relating to association with the uh, UFO program. We'll talk about those right now. Here's an example. Uh, he's talking about, actually Vernon is talking about, you can spin tall tales of moon dust accused the Air Force of covering up the greatest story since Christ and so forth. And the, the writer on the left has put Project Moondust. Well, it turns out Project Moondust is a project that is, is classified, but generally it's been identified as a recovery program to, for any, if any vehicle crashes, and uh, we'll go recover it. And, and of course, the Moondust recovery program has allegedly a top secret version which is recovering UFOs as opposed to just ordinary satellites that are crashing. This particular page is interesting because it's got one of the original stamps. That blue stamp makes this very authentic with respect to Air Force use. And the uh, handwritten information there says, do not withdraw from files personal notes of Colonel Hayward. And the file of ATIC, ATC, APBPR, UFO section, these are identification of the uh, organizations at Wright-Patterson uh, that dealt with UFOs. Uh, another interesting one was a comment in the book that a Harvard professor is telling his classes he can prove that there are people on other planets. And one reviewer said, well, it's a highly dubious source of information, Dorothy Kilgallen. But the other one says, what is DM doing? And here's the original which uh, shows right here, this is, an, what is DM doing? That's 1977 ink. And, excuse me, that's pen, this is one is pencil. Uh, this is pencil. And uh, this is, uh, says, I hope DM keeps his big mouth shut. So for those of you who are familiar at all with the Eisenhower briefing documents, Don Menzel was identified as one of the MJ members, one through 12. And he was a professor who wrote three books that were anti-UFO books uh, that tried to destroy the credibility of, of the cases that were being discussed. The final set of, of annotations that impress me are on uh, notes apparently by Ben Hayward himself, who is apparently talking to someone who's a distinguished guy who wants to learn more. He talks about NPIC, National Photographic Information Center, White Hot, which is the label for a set of leaked documents that I have, Blue Room, which is allegedly where the aliens were kept at Wright Pat, and TS restricted, a classification that has been denied to be existing. And Nate and Van presumably could be Nathan Twining and Van Vandenberg. So anyway, the, uh, that's a summary of, of that particular one document, 
which 